Hey there, welcome back to Foolish Engineer. Today we are going to crack open the world of the primary site regulator flyback converter, especially one powered by the LM25184 IC from TI. This circuit is widely used in everything from solar inverters to electric vehicles. And today we are going to break it down piece by piece. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. One of the key reasons I started this YouTube channel is to bridge the gap between outdated Indian education system and actual skills needed in the industry. I'm excited to share that this video is sponsored by Altium. If you are an electronic student in India, you can get Altium Designer for free under its Altium Student Lab program. It is an advanced electronics hardware design platform. It's a fantastic way to enhance your skill and increase your chances of landing a job in core electronics companies. And with its best feature, Altium 365, you can upload projects to the cloud, manage libraries, collaborate and review with your team. It supports all CAD files, making an electronics design faster and easier. Just use your university email to get started. Plus, you'll receive a student license, a PCB design course and a certificate recognized by top Indian industries. You also get a free access to Power Analyzer by Keysight. I have personally used Altium Designer since the start of my electronics journey and I really recommend it. So don't miss this chance. You can get started with Altium 365 by clicking the link in the description. A primary site regulated flyback converter is a type of DC to DC converter that provides electrical isolation between the input and output while regulating the output voltage without requiring feedback from the secondary side. Instead, it uses voltage sensing from the primary winding to achieve the regulation. Let's break it down step by step. The flyback converter consists of the following key components. First is the transformer. It provides electrical isolation and energy storage. Then switching element or MOSFET, which is controlled by the IC to regulate the energy flow. Primary side circuit, it includes the input capacitor, switching controller and feedback sensing. Secondary side circuit, which includes the rectifying diode and output capacitor for voltage rectification and filtering. And finally, the controller IC. It regulates the switching of the MOSFET based on the feedback from the primary side. Flyback converter works in two main phases. First, energy storage phase and second, energy transfer phase. In energy storage mode, when the MOSFET is turned on by the controller IC, current flows to the primary winding of the transformer. The transformer's primary winding stores energy in the form of magnetic field. During this phase, the secondary side of the transformer is disconnected because the rectifying diode is reverse biased. Hence, no energy flows to the load. The energy here acts like a bucket being filled with water. The energy is temporarily stored and will be transferred during the next phase. In the next phase, which is energy transfer, when the MOSFET is turned off, the magnetic field in the transformer collapses. This collapsing field induces a voltage in the secondary winding of the transformer. The rectifying diode on the secondary side becomes forward biased which allows energy to flow into the output capacitor and to the load. This phase is like pouring water from the bucket into a tank. The stored energy is transferred to the output, smoothing out the output voltage and powering the load. The PSR flyback converter uses primary side feedback to regulate the output voltage. Here is how it works. When the MOSFET turns off, the voltage across the primary winding of the transformer, also known as flyback voltage, 
is directly proportional to the output voltage on the secondary side. The controller IC samples this flyback voltage during the off phase, which regulates the output voltage. If the sample flyback voltage indicates that the output voltage is too low, the controller increases the on time of the MOSFET during the next cycle, which is increasing energy transfer. If the output voltage is too high, the controller decreases the on time of the MOSFET, reducing the energy transfer. Once energy reaches the secondary side, rectifying diode converts the AC-like signal from the waveform into DC. Then the output capacitor smoothens the output voltage, ensuring a steady output for the load. The output is now regulated and ready to power the connected device. Many PSR flyback converters operate in boundary conduction mode. In BCM, the MOSFET turns on right after the transformer's secondary current reaches to zero. This improves efficiency by reducing the switching losses and minimizes electromagnetic interference. Let's compare primary side regulation and secondary side regulation flyback converters, and we'll see which one is better. The regulation of the PSR flyback converter is handled entirely from the primary side of the transformer. The IC measures the voltage on the transformer's primary winding during the off cycle to regulate the output voltage. No optocoupler or secondary side feedback components are required. The regulation in the SSR flyback converter is performed on the secondary side of the transformer. A feedback circuit on the secondary side directly measures the output voltage. This information is sent to the primary side using an optocoupler or similar isolation mechanism. The PSR flyback converter has simpler design, which has no optocoupler or secondary side circuit, or there is no need of any additional transformers. The PSR controller integrates all the functionality reducing the component count and PCB size. The SSR flyback converter has more complex design due to additional components like autocoupler or voltage reference circuits and precision register on the secondary side. PSR flyback converter typically achieve regulation within 1% to 1.5% accuracy, but it may be less accurate for high output currents or varying load conditions. The SSR flyback converter directly measures the output voltage on the secondary side, allowing for better regulation accuracy, often within 0.5%. The PSR flyback converter has lower cost and fewer components. It reduces the manufacturing complexity and improves reliability by removing potential failure points like optocoupler degradation. SSR flyback converter, on the other hand, has higher cost and more components, which include optocoupler, secondary side reference, and associated passive components. These extra components increase the bill of material and take more PCB space. PSR flyback converter has high efficiency in low power and medium power applications because of reduced component count and simpler logic control. However, efficiency may drop in applications with high load variations due to less precise regulation. SSR flyback converter has superior efficiency at high power levels or in scenarios with significant load variation, thanks to direct feedback from the output. Optocoupler losses and added circuitry may slightly reduce the efficiency of low power applications. PSR flyback converter is less flexible in handling multiple outputs or higher output voltages because the primary side regulation is tied to the transformer winding ratio. The SSR flyback converter is more flexible as secondary side feedback can be customized for each output. Now let's see how the actual circuit looks like and it's working. Okay, so here's the circuit we are dealing with. This converter is based on the LM25184 IC from TI. This circuit is used to convert an input voltage between 6 volts to 42 volts into a stable 12 volt output, all while keeping the input and output sides electrically isolated. 
This IC regulates everything from primary side, so we don't need any extra components like optocouplers or feedback from the secondary side. Now we reach the heart of the circuit. This chip is responsible for switching the power on and off to the transformer. Every time it switches, it stores energy in the transformer during on period. When it switches off, that energy is transferred to the secondary side of the transformer. The transformer T1 has a 1 is to 1 ratio, which means the voltage across the winding stays proportional. But how does this IC make sure we get a stable 12 volt output? That's where the feedback and control systems come into picture. The resistor RFB takes a sample of the flyback voltage from the transformer and feeds it back to the IC's FB pin. This tells IC how much voltage is being delivered to the output. Then we have R set and RTC. These resistors are used to fine-tune the output voltage and provide temperature compensation. But the compensation in the IC ensures that the output voltage stays within 1.5% accuracy, even as the temperature changes. The D-Fly is a short key diode which is known as the fast switching and low forward voltage drop diode. It helps rectify the AC voltage from transformer into usable DC. D2 is a clamping diode. Its job is to protect the circuit from high voltage spikes that can occur when the transformer switches off. These spikes can cause by the transformer's inductive properties and can be dangerous if not controlled. Next, we have output capacitors C out a combination of 22 microfarad and 100 microfarad capacitors. These capacitors smooth out the rectified voltage, providing a clean, stable DC output. Without them, we'd have noisy fluctuating power at the output, which isn't ideal for sensitive electronics. All of these components are calculated after proper design calculations. So where do we actually use circuits like this? Well, flyback converters are ideal for applications where you need isolation and efficiency. One is electric vehicle chargers. These converters help manage the power flow from main battery to auxiliary electronics. Then solar power systems. They convert fluctuating DC from solar panels into stable output that can power household appliances and some industrial power supplies, where precision and safety are important. I hope you learned something new from this video. Don't forget to check the description for references. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.